Some optimization problems are not in the standard form of linear programming, but through transformations can be brought to that form. In this unit, we'll look at several examples. We'll start with some really easy ones. Let's recall what the standard form is. A minimization of a linear function subject to a collection of linear inequality constraints. A simple one to deal with is a maximum rather than a minimum. Still a linear function, still linear constraints. By taking the negative of the objective and doing a minimization, and then taking a negative of the result, this is an equivalent problem. Apart from the minus sign on the outside, it's a linear program in standard form. There's a minimization of a linear objective subject to linear inequality constraints. What about an affine objective rather than linear? So minimize c transpose x plus d, notice the plus d, subject to linear inequality constraints. Clearly the minimization is unaffected by d, that's just a constant offset, so move the d outside and add that to the minimization. This optimization is equivalent to the original one. It involves d plus the solution to a linear program in standard form. Those are easy transformations. Let's lay some groundwork for a more complicated one. Here's an alternative way to look at finding the maximum of a bunch of numbers. Suppose I have a collection of numbers z1 through zn, and I want to determine the maximum entry, max over i, zi. This can be thought of as a linear program itself. Find the smallest number t, which is larger than all the z's. Notice that the appropriate number is the maximum. Anything larger than the maximum of all the z's is not the smallest number greater than the z's, and anything smaller than the maximum is not greater than or equal to all the z's. Hence, that is exactly the maximum. Let's write that as a linear program. Minimize overall real valued t, t, subject to zi is less than or equal to t. Notice this is a linear program in standard form. Minimizing over a real variable, the cost function is a linear function of that real variable, and there are several constraints, all of which are linear inequalities in that real variable. That is a linear program in standard form. We can use this to solve a much less trivial problem. Suppose the objective function is not a linear function, but it's the maximum of several linear functions. Let me graph that to show you what I mean. Here's an axis. There's the first function. y is c1x plus d. We'll be a little sloppy and call that a linear function, even though it's actually affine. How about another affine function? y equals c2x plus d2 y equals c3x plus d3, c4x plus d4, and c5x plus d5. Those are all affine or linear functions, but what if we're interested in the maximum of these? So the pointwise maximum. At any x, find the linear function that is the largest. That's this graph of the red dashed line. That's clearly not a linear function of x. Can we solve problems where functions of this form are the objective function? Let's see. There I've graphed it again, and let's look at what we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve minimize over x in Rm, this cost function, this pointwise maximum over a bunch of affine functions, subject to the normal linear inequalities of a linear program in standard form. Remember though that the maximum of a bunch of numbers is the smallest number larger than all of them. Therefore, let's rewrite this, expressing the term in the brackets as another minimization. So, on the outside, minimize over x in Rm, and underneath, subject to ax less than or equal to b. That's exactly as before. And the inside term has simply been rewritten as a minimum. Minimize over t, the value t, subject to the constraint that cx plus d must be less than or equal to t for all possible i. We know that at any fixed value of x, that is the maximum up above. Now I've just got a minimization over two variables, x, which is in Rm, and t, which is in R. I can do that minimization jointly, and the constraints involve linear combinations of t and x, and in one case, just x. Therefore, this can be rewritten as minimize over x and t, those are the decision variables now, just t, subject to all the constraints that we have listed. In this case, the top constraint is a times x is less than or equal to b. That was the original constraint. 
The other constraints involve ci transpose x minus t less than or equal to negative di. That's exactly the constraint we got when we rewrote the maximum as a constrained minimization. Now let's recognize that t is indeed a linear function of x and t. It's 0 times x plus 1 times t. That's obvious. And finally, we can then write this as minimize over z. z is the variable x stacked above t. c tilde transpose z. c tilde is as shown there, the 0 vector and the 1, subject to a tilde z less than or equal to b tilde. And the a tilde and b tilde arrays are on the right as shown. What about the maximum of some absolute values? Given a collection of numbers, we can also determine the maximum entry of the absolute values of the numbers and recast that as an LP. Find the smallest number t, which is larger than all the z's and larger than all the negative z's. Find the smallest number t which does that. That's clearly the maximum of the absolute values of the z's. can write that as a linear program. The maximum over a bunch of numbers of their absolute value is the minimum over a single scalar real variable subject to 2n constraints. t should be greater than all the z's and t should be greater than all the negative z's. How about a sum of absolute values? The sum of the absolute value of a bunch of numbers can also be rewritten as a linear program. Find t1, t2 up to tn with minimum sum subject to the constraint that each t is greater than its corresponding z and greater than its corresponding negative z. Let's write that as a linear program. The summation of the absolute value of the zi's is the smallest possible summation of ti's subject to the constraint that each ti is greater than zi and negative zi. Linear program in standard form. This allows us to transform a problem like this into a linear program. Here we're minimizing over x the sum of the absolute value of a bunch of linear functions subject to linear inequality constraints. Again, let's rewrite the sum of the absolute value as a minimization, which was just shown how to do on the previous page involving a new variable t. So the summation has been converted to find the smallest summation of variables t subject to t should be greater than c transpose x plus d and greater than negative c transpose x minus d for each possible value of i. At any given fixed value of x, that is the sum of the absolute values on the left. It's now a minimization in two variables, so let's do that minimization jointly and simply write down all the constraints. If we stack the row vectors of c1 transpose, c2 transpose, up to cn transpose, and call that array capital C, then this can be re-expressed as this. We're minimizing over two sets of decision variables, x and t, the summation of the t's, subject to, and now let's read the constraints. The first constraint is just ax is less than or equal to b. That was part of the original problem. And the remaining constraints are the constraints that were used to turn the sum of the absolute values into a minimization. The first one is c times x minus t is less than negative d. That's the first constraint. The second one is negative c times x minus t is less than or equal to d. And that's the second constraint. The summation of the t's is really just nothing times the x's plus a vector of 1's times all the entries of the t vector. So that can be recast as a linear function of x and t. And finally, the arrays a tilde and b tilde are expressed as on the right. Again, z is the vertical concatenation of the x vector and the t vector. In this unit, we've learned how to transform functions that involve summations of absolute values and maximums back into linear programs in the standard form. There's lots of tricks like this, and if you look up linear programming transformations on Wikipedia, you'll find these and other ideas on how to take problems that are not obviously linear programs and turn them into linear programs.